Hello, this is Julia Weta with the Creative Journey and Shamanic Art Studio. I have with me today guest speaker Lisa Barnett, who knows a lot about the Akasic, Akasic record. <laughs> I'm probably not saying it correctly. And she's an author and does all kinds of interesting things. So take it away, Lisa. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Julia. Thanks for having me on. Um, so let me just start a, with explaining a little bit about what the Akashic Records are. So I say Akashic. Um, people pronounce it a little bit differently depending on where you're from. But the Sanskrit word Akasha is, um, means sky or ether in kind of a trans Sanskrit translation, depending on how <laughs> close we imagine we can get to Sanskrit, to translating that. So if you imagine that the Akashic record is the record of your soul from the time your soul individuated from source, and it continues to everything you have ever been or done, continues to be recorded in this etheric energy in the um, really information arm of, of source. And so everything you have ever been or done in this life or in any of the hundreds of human lives you've had or other lives in other dimensions and other realms, everything you've ever been and done as a soul is recorded in your personal Akashic record. Now, what I find for a lot of people is that imagining the Akashic Record as a library kind of gives us a way to put it in human terms, right? And so imagine that you have a library, and that library is filled with thousands of books. And it would literally be thousands of books, because right here in the human realm, most of us live up to around 800 lifetimes here on Earth. And part of that is because Earth has really been here a very long time, and we as great ancient souls come here, and we come to learn and we come to grow, but we often also get kind of stuck in a karmic cycle. And it may take us, I don't know, 20 30 lifetimes to work through, say, a karmic pattern, especially the big ones. So everything you are is recorded in your Akashic Records. So imagine here you are in this library in a beautiful room with thousands of books surrounding you. And one of the really nice things to know is that not only do you have your own library, but you actually have your own librarians. And it's very profound to have these divine etheric guides helping you to find the information that's useful to you. So we have an Akashic record and we have Akashic record keepers or librarians. I often also refer to them as beings of light, or sometimes even the Akashic Masters. Each person has a whole group of these beautiful beings who have really just um, devoted their life to you. <laughs> so they're not ascended masters. They haven't been human. They're not your great-grandmother or anyone you know who has crossed over. They literally are pure source. They are souls who have not really taken their earthly or human or exploratory journeys yet. Um, that they have started by learning and growing, by keeping the records for other souls. And they usually eventually will go on their own soul path and their own journey. But for now, we each have our own, I don't know, dozen plus guides Akashic record keepers, masters, and teachers who are here to help you. So the reason that I love to talk about the Akashic records and, um, and I say that, that this tool, accessing your own Akashic records, is one of the most empowering tools 
in a way that we can access right here on earth, right here and now, relatively easily. Which is, you know, kind of a big piece, <laughs> because of course, there's lots of things we can learn to do over, you know, years and years and years of study and meditation. And, um, but the Akashic Beings of Light, the record keepers, have asked me to help to bring this energy, information, and wisdom back to humanity by creating a school by writing these books, and by sharing their information. So I literally channel these books. They say to me, you know. How, um, did, you, how did you realize that you could channel? Well, you know, the way I say, um, the way I use channeling is a little bit different than some people. So someone like Esther Hicks, who channels Abraham, she's a full body channel. That means really her spirit kind of leaves her physical body and Abraham's spirit comes in. So she has no memory of the channeling. And then there's many of us who, who are kind of maybe um, partial uh, body channels and I really hear the information and just let it flow to and through me. So I'm a fully conscious channel. I'm in the Akashic records. I will tell you what they say, but my voice doesn't change. I don't talk differently. There are occasions where I will um, say channel healing prayers or bring through some very big information and I literally will feel my voice drop down and I almost feel my spirit step back into that kind of partial body channel. But that's a lot more that's a lot more rare in this sort of case. But we can hear, see, feel, receive all of the Akasha guidance and really put it into, um, you know, put it into play in our lives. So there goes my little dog. Somebody's clunking around outside. Yeah. So, um, so um, Let's see. I was so channeling. So really, the way the Akashic records work when I teach it to people is that I teach you um, sacred prayers. They have given me many different sacred prayers to access the Akashic records. So they've given us a five-step wisdom prayer system. Great. The, yeah, so it's a it's a relatively simple system and I teach online all the time because I find that of course I have students all over the world right now. I've got a class with people in Thailand, Australia, China, um and US and Canada. And so it's a great group from, you know, all sorts of, and some of Europe, I got especially, um, interestingly, I find Norway and Denmark um, and UK, you know, probably more the, the uh, English speaking countries um, as a rule, but I've had uh, my last class, French uh, um, people. And so it's very fun to be able to share this wisdom. Uh, one of my book is, books has just been translated into Czech and um, and also into Spanish. So I have two books. The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records is the first book. And it literally outlines the five-step wisdom prayer system. So if you want to um, do kind of a nice uh, short course of learning to access the records, you can find The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records on Amazon. And uh, it comes in a couple languages. And then I, I teach about quarterly on the internet. And then my new book, which is called From Questioning to Knowing, 73 Prayer Prayers to Transform Your Life. And what the Akashic Masters said to me about a year ago is they said, let's write another book. And I said, okay, what should we write about? You know, I had already written the Akashic Record really how-to book. And, and that really is helping people start to access their records. And then they come take um, uh, internet classes with me because I teach 
five levels of or four levels of um, Akasha classes. So the book covers some of the first level of the beginning access. And then we, of course, want to go deep into these records. These are the records of your soul. There is so much information in there. So let me just touch on a little bit. Um, why would you access your Akashic records? Some people say to me, oh, that's just about past lives, isn't it? Well, I don't really care that much about past lives. I don't really care who I was. And what the Akashic record keepers say to us is that ev because everything you have ever been or done is written in the Akashic records, all of your gifts and your talents are written in the records. Um, and when we come into a body every lifetime, we, live, we write a soul plan which just like if you were going to start a business, you might write a business plan. We write a plan for our soul and included in that soul plan are soul contracts with other people we want to be with. Sometimes they're around um, finishing some old karma. They're around being with people that we lo you know, love and enjoy, our soul family. They're around learning and growth. So it may write in some spiritual teachers or, or um, uh, soul family members who are here to uh, elevate you and help you remember the truth of who you are or you them you may be here to elevate some of your soul family who's sleeping this lifetime or or maybe you um you have some old karma with them or incomplete soul contracts and so each time we come into a life we write this plan and in it are um all these pieces as well as our soul purpose, what we want to come to do, uh, the gifts and talents, some of the gifts and talents we have from other lives that we'd like to share with the world. So for me in this life, one of them was about writing. And I went into my Akashic Records and I went back many, many, many times to reclaim those memories of being a published author, of writing with ease, of being able to channel wisdom and get out of my own way and be able to clear old blocks that were, you know, keeping me stuck or afraid of writing, thinking, oh, I'm not good enough to write a book. Who am I to write a book about the Akashic Records or who am I to write a book? Heck, I'm not, I'm not talented, right? So when I could go into my Akashic Records and look at and ask about these different past lives where this has been a talent, where I have written books, where I have been published. It was very, very helpful to understand why the Akashic Masters would say, Lisa, write this book, or Lisa, channel this information, bring this Akashic record um, information back to the planet because I have had so many lifetimes as a channel, as an oracle in the goddess temples. And actually, what they have shared with me is that as an Akashic Record master, probably millions of years ago if we go with the human lifetime thing, but like I say, our Akashic Record Keepers are pure divine souls and they haven't really gone on their human journey yet so i at one point kept the records for other souls and then i eventually went on my journey and of course you know here i am now and have a greater connection and greater wisdom about the akashic records than a lot of people because i had that experience and so many other people have different types of experiences different gifts and talents whether they're very um more star seed from other worlds and other planets, maybe bringing through new scientific information for humanity, or maybe you've had many, many, many shamanic lifetimes where you've lived in um, different realms as a shaman, as a teacher, as a healer. Maybe you know a lot about herbs and medicines and, and the medicinal property of plants and herbs because you have that as 
some of your past lives as a shaman. So you can go in and reclaim some of that information and wisdom. You can really reconnect to it in a deeper way so you can feel it in your body, in your life, in your memory. We can actually bring that energy present into our bodies now. So when people say, you know, I don't really care about my past lives, I say, but there's so much juicy information there for you. There's so much to know about who you are because it's not just maybe a dozen lives where maybe one life you were a peasant and one life you were a servant and one life you were a queen and one life you were a, uh, maybe a, a, maybe you were a writer or maybe in one life you were a shaman or one life you lived in this country or one in that country and then that was your 12 lives because we have hundreds and thousands of lives um, the earthly ones are easier to access, I find personally, but I also find that we can get a lot of information about our otherworldly lives, the planets we've come from, some of the gifts and talents we're bringing to the earth here, which may be from other worlds and planets, um, as well as... Um, you know, the, the, as I say, the gifts and talents, but whether that may be in a more scientific realm or a healing realm, an energy realm, um, just a very deep wisdom. So you can just imagine that you're thousands and millions of, you know, years old and so much there for you to to have to own to reclaim to remember <laughs> sounds fascinating yes yeah so it's very deep in that way so the recent most recent book from questioning to knowing the 73 prayers to transform your life what the akashic record keepers had said to me was that it's so important for all of us to assist in the ascension process. And to them, they really talk about that as the awakening, the remembering. The ascension to them is about raising our vibrations and strengthening our light bodies so that we literally can have a human and divine life here on earth. So they often say, we're creating heaven on earth through this awakening, through this ascension. And so they suggested that we write this book to help people heal and clear a lot of the old um, pains and issues and traumas. And so um, in the book, and I just love to share a, a prayer or two, um, there's some fun prayer, some fun prayers like the prayer to expand time is the one that showed up to share right now. And there's some for to assist Mother Earth, to connect to the wisdom that we have as Earth Keepers for some of us who are Earth Guardians. Um, and they're not only prayer. So the book is not just a prayer book. Like sometimes people write, you know, 365 prayers, you know, just open and pick one each day. This has 73 healing prayers, but there's so much of the information and wisdom I've channeled from the Akashic Record Keepers to give to people about how they, um, explain what is a soul contract why do we sometimes have soul contracts with family members that feel you know negative or out of alignment or that have been really challenging in our lives what's that about and they talk about karma forgiveness and the path to enlightenment and how as we learn to forgive those around us we are really awakening again elevating our vibration and moving towards awareness and awakening. So there's many different um, chapters. We talk about um, physical healing and illness, how stuck emotions can trigger illness in the body. And so there's quite a bit of work around that, as well as um, a prayer to release past life vows. Because it's another thing I find that many of the light workers have are things like um, past life vows because we've been spiritual in so many different lifetimes. 
that we can we have you know been a a monk or a nun or a priest and we've taken a a vow of poverty and those vows may still be affecting you so you may have said i'm never going to take money for my god given gifts say as a as a monk or a priest and you were a healer and so now as a healer you feel like oh i shouldn't ask for money you know, for my God-given gifts. And the um, so they're really past life vows that can be cleared and released. So let me do a couple of these with you because I think they're very fun and people can feel them a little bit. Great. So the prayer to expand time. I'll start with that and then we'll do the past life vows because that's good for everyone. <laughs> So, expanding time, Mother, Father, Goddess, God, please assist me in knowing the expansive state of time. Time flows in a circle all around me as I choose to flow through time with ease. I know everything is happening in the infinite state of the all and in divine right timing. I release the past and step into the present. I am in the perfect moment now, and so it is. Blessed be. And some of these prayers are so useful to do um, for many of us on a regular basis, whether that's daily or, you know, whenever you're just feeling stressed, overwhelmed, or rushed. That's a beautiful prayer, just to know everything is in divine right order, divine timing, and there is always enough time because time is infinite. So as we drop into that feeling, I love that. I just kind of feel the energy open and expand and feel like, oh, that's right. That's a, that's a goodie. For <laughs> yes, I think I need that one often. <laughs> right, that's a good one for me too. I'm like, oh, I have to remember to do that prayer on a regular basis. And so here's the prayer to release past life vows. So if you just imagine that in some other life you were a monk or a nun or a priest or some sort of ascetic in some lifetime or maybe numerous ones and you said, you know, I take a vow of poverty, I take a vow of chastity, I take a, a actually often we also took um, vows of obedience. And I always feel like it's time to let go of those old vows. No need for them now, right? So this is the prayer to release past life vows. Mother, Father, Goddess, God, I align to the present in this very moment. I have experienced blocked energy in my life and in my body. I now know this is not who I am. I, I go into the past, into lifetimes, holding vows of poverty. I release those vows to the divine energy of source. I am grateful for all the gifts those lifetimes have given me. I now claim all my highest good, wisdom, and truth that I can now hold. I walk forward cleared of past life energy, fears, and blocks as I embrace my abundant life. I am abundance, and so it is. Blessed be. Could you tell us once again where we can get your book and how people Absolutely. Find okay. So a couple of things. This prayer book is from Questioning to Knowing, 73 Prayers to Transform Your Life. It's on Amazon, of course, Amazon.com. But let me offer you a gift. If you go to prayers to transform.com. You will be able to, you'll see the book with a link to Amazon, but you can also download three free gifts that are connected to the book and to the Akashic work. So there is a um, ebook, which is our prayers of self-love. There is a beautiful um, rainbow shield meditation to help keep you filled with your highest energy and guided, guarded, and protected on your soul path. And the third one is a beautiful column of light meditation that helps you connect to the Akashic field as you do the prayers each day. 
So those three gifts are at prayers to transform. That's prayers with an S to transform.com. Or you can find them also on my website at akashicknowing.com. And so those are our uh, gifts from the Akashic Masters, along with more information about how to get my book. Great. Thank you so much for being here with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.